and the Plumbers Gas Fit Australia's Registration Board of New Zealand to their first general meeting as directors of the World Plumbing Council. Another special welcome uh, I wish to make is to uh, representatives of the following companies um, uh, based on our registrations. Uh, although I, um, I know this morning uh, we do have a bit of a clash with the Plumbing Industry Leadership Coalition. So uh, a number of the registrants are actually there for the morning, but um, we're really hopeful they'll be able to join us uh, for the forum uh, a bit later today. Uh, so we have uh, uh, registered with the um, with our meeting today, uh, Adventstyle, the American Society of uh, Plumbing Engineers, Department of Agriculture and Water Resources Australia, COLA, National Inspection Testing and Certification Corporation, Plumbers Gas Fitters and Drainers Board of New Zealand, Plumbing Industry Climate Action Centre, Standards Australia, Swiss Tech, United Association, and UL. Uh, and a special mention to IATMO, who um, have a large contingent here today and have assisted greatly in putting uh, this meeting together. And UL, well, um, are there any uh, other uh, companies or organisations uh, represented that I have uh, covered up for? Just get the whole list. That's, that's fantastic. Okay. She, we do have a couple. Yeah. Francesca Dunbar, McQueen Incorporated. Oh, fantastic! Welcome. And Jay Peters, Codes and Standards International. Excellent. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, well, to be fair, I'm to everyone. Uh, I do have a couple of apologies to get through. Uh, on behalf of uh, three directors, Kevin Wellman, Ken Gardner, and uh, Mr. Lou uh, Kevin Wellman. Um, had to make uh, had made arrangements to attend, but unfortunately, uh, he's got some uh, family illness and um, has uh, had to stay in uh, England to support uh, at the last moment. Uh, so uh, we certainly wish uh, Kevin and his family all the best. Uh, Ken Gardner was uh, our, our honorary secretary and treasurer, uh, was unable to attend to prior commitments, and uh, Lujan. Uh, could make the uh, meeting due to a series of uh, meetings he is holding at the moment in, in China, which uh, was an unfortunate clash. And we've got some apologies from uh, Lily Kai from China and uh, Renee Mackler, um, one of our members from Switzerland. Are there any other um, apologies that we want to note for the record? Very good. What I'm going to do now is just uh, hand over to Emily, who uh, many of you may know been doing a lot of uh, behind the scenes work just to cover off on some of the housekeeping. Thanks, Emily. Okay, hi everyone. Um, so just to let you know that there is Wi-Fi available in this room if you haven't already connected. So that is at uh, DT meetings with the password being WPC. Um, the restrooms can be found outside this door and to the left, and emergency exits are out this, outside this door down the hall through the lobby. Um, we'll have a short break during this general meeting for you know, coffee and refreshments. And uh, we are planning to finish the general meeting at about midday today um, or earlier if, if possible. Um, following that, we will have lunch at midday in the strawberry pig room, which is just $2 down on, on the right. Uh, and at 1 pm, we'll be back for the Four Pillars of Plumbing Forum. So we'll have to see you all back for that. If you have any questions about anything, just let me know. Come and find me uh, anywhere. Thanks. Thanks very much, Emily. Um, just working through the uh, the agenda. Um, previous minutes in November 2017, all members were sent a, a copy of the minutes from the uh, Abu Dhabi General Meeting. Uh, there are hard copies of the minutes and the current financial report. And agenda for this meeting at the back of the room if you uh, haven't got a copy of the papers. Um, but uh, those minutes before the meeting, can I get a, a mover and a second for those uh, minutes, please? Yes. Second. Good, thank you. Um, are there any uh, uh, questions or issues arising from those previous minutes? Good. Uh, then, um, Happy to uh, have those minutes accepted. Very good. Um, I'd like to now just uh, move into the chair's report. 
Uh, and I'd like to give an overview of the activities of the WPC in the seven months since the last general meeting in Abu Dhabi. At the uh, Abu Dhabi general meeting, we were able to see for the first time the result of our increased focus on providing real benefit to the global plumbing industry. The meeting was held in Abu Dhabi to coincide with the International World Skills Competition. We participated and contributed directly to the event through the awarding of the WPC medallions and honorary memberships to 24 competitors, 32 experts and 32 supporting organisations who took part in the plumbing and heating competition. The awarding of the WPC medallions was uh, enthusiastically supported by World Skills International and extremely well received uh, by, the by the recipients as it demonstrated the support of the entire global plumbing industry for their efforts and was unique to the plumbing and heating competition. The other part of the Abu Dhabi meeting which demonstrated WPC commitment to the betterment of the industry was through holding the first forum based on WPC's four pillars of plumbing initiative. This initiative, for those who haven't yet heard of it, is the WPC's plan for developing a scorehouse of information, opinions and best practices and experience on, on the operating frameworks of plumbing industries from around the world. And the four pillars are participation, how people enter the industry, such as the training requirements for doing plumbing work, practices, how we can ensure plumbing work is carried out day, day to day meets needed standards, and if it doesn't, how people can be held accountable. Products, how we can best ensure plumbing products and materials meet minimum standards for quality and safety. And protection, how we can put in place measures to protect consumers and plumbers themselves from a range of risks faced by each. During the Abu Dhabi meeting, we held a forum based on participation. We had representations about industry entry and training requirements in Brazil, Canada, India, Switzerland, the UK, USA and Australia. Each presentation contributed a wealth of information regarding the training available in each country and the unique opportunities and challenges faced in implementing and enforcing training standards. The presentations are now available to download from the publication section of the World Plumbing Council website. The forum was a real turning point for WC and since holding the forum, there was a great deal more engagement from WPC members who want to learn from and contribute to this knowledge base that we're creating. One of the largest, one of the great lessons learned from that meeting was to uh, fully provide benefit to our members and supporters. It would be helpful if the information gathered during these meetings and forums was more accessible. Uh, and that's why today we were attending to uh, live stream uh, both the, the general meeting and this afternoon's uh, second Four Pillars of Plumbing Forum onto the uh, WPC YouTube channel. Um, and we, uh, we've put that up. Mm -hmm. uh, excellent. So um, uh, we are very aware that it's uh, not practical for all our members to fly to meetings all over the world. So we hope that by using the technology available today, we'll be able to uh, bring this forum to all who are interested. The live stream will be available on uh, our YouTube channel for viewing following the broadcast. So it does not need to uh, be viewed right now, which is particularly important given the range of uh, time zones that, uh, that we cover. Uh, just moving on to portfolio reviews. The increase in activity from the WPC portfolios over the last seven months saw some fantastic results in the increased uptake <coughs> of uh, World Plumbing Day activities around the world. Uh, in particular, there were uh, great events held for the first time in uh, China, Nigeria, Morocco and the Philippines. Uh, the WPC's flagship event is growing and this has been in no small part due to having three WPC uh, directors working specifically to promote the day. Uh, Director Albert, uh, Alberto Fossa in Brazil, Lu Jian in China and Kevin Wellman in the UK drove their own celebrations but also worked generally promoting uh, the WPD all over the world. There's still work to do and WPC needs 
updated and consistent World Plumbing Day resources that our members can uh, easily access for the use, for use on um, on World Plumbing Day. Mm -hmm. And Director uh, Alberto Costa will discuss the WPD uh, celebrations that were held in March this year and talk about our plans for the next six months ahead of uh, World Plumbing Day 2019 celebrations later this morning. In the marketing and communications, uh, the WPC has been making headway with updating the uh, website. There's now a dedicated events page where uh, we are listing all industry events. Uh, the member profiles area is being updated with current member information and there is work being done to improve various aspects of the website and our social media channels. Uh, our director, Dave Viola, will uh, cover this off very soon. Financially, uh, we're in pretty good shape with the year to date, surplus of uh, 62000 for the end of April. And as discussed in Abu Dhabi, this is largely due to directors' organisations taking on responsibility for major operating costs to the WPC. The income has remained in line with previous years, and the financial focus for the WPC is now on growing income. We have a potential uh, prospectus for sponsorships, which is aimed at increasing income and therefore resources that will allow the council to pursue its goals. In terms of receiving membership payments, the WPC is moving forward. We're trying to improve this experience for our members. We recognise that at the start of each year, it's a very difficult process for our members to renew their memberships online. This system that we are using, quite simply, does not um, appear to uh, be meeting uh, contemporary uh, membership mm -hmm. database requirements. And we're certainly trying to find a system that will meet our needs and have it implemented as soon as possible. And I'll talk further, further about that in uh, the uh, portfolio report later on. Another contribution or output that I think we should be, uh, we should be coming for the WPC in this area of, uh, is in the area of funding, training and education. A great bulk of this activity takes place at a national level and WPC has so far targeted its resources specifically at improving the knowledge and capacities of committed plumbing trainers. The WPC Plumbing Trainer Scholarships enable recipients to learn in overseas environments and we've had one recipient over, we have one recipient over in Japan right now. Director Tom Bigley will talk further on this area, which is uh, his WPC portfolio a little later. And we'll hear for the first time from our research and innovation portfolio. This portfolio, which is headed up by um, Peter Jackson, focuses on exploring the merits and highlighting new initiatives from manufacturers and suppliers worldwide that can make a difference to the industry. Uh, this will be a particular highlight given that we will be uh, focusing on the, the products pillars later this afternoon. And um, we'll be uh, hearing a bit more too from BSA in Iran. He'll take us through what the, um, will be our first regionally focused four pillars of plumbing forum. And we'll look at uh, what's been planned for October 2018 in Mumbai, um, which is also the next uh, WPC general meeting. Um, that's just an overview of our, uh, our most recent uh, activities. And um, I'll just pause now. Is there any uh, questions on uh, any of that material? If not, then um, it's my great pleasure to introduce Alberto Fossa, Director of uh, World Plumbing Day Portfolio. Thanks, Alberto. Can you Yeah, Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, this is a very, very quick report about the uh, World Plan Day. Uh, our portfolio, strategic portfolio, covers this general purpose. 
to to make the work planning days very strong around the world. Uh, the work planning day is considered one strong pillar to pass our messaging uh, across the global uh, that try to lead the people to engage and the, the, the defense of the green sectors uh, uh, around the world with a, a lot of so different kinds of uh, sectors and organizations including producers uh, vendor people and, and constructors and, and organizations like that. Uh, we divide the five uh, different accountabilities uh, that help me and help the, 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 the board directors to lead with the promotions related to World Implementing Day. The World Implementing Monitoring and Review covers the idea to keep your to, to keep everybody uh, with the, the most uh, important activities we are doing during the, 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 the time, uh, 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 during the, the days. Uh, the promotion of the strategy uh, covers the detail related to different actions we are promoting each year. The World Implementing Day Global Promotion Activities try to engage new countries and new members uh, from this kind of celebration. Uh, UN recognition of World Economy Day is a very, very specific actions we are trying to promote. Uh, we are trying to convince Union Nations to establish a World Economy Day like a very important celebration like other sectors we have. Uh, and the final is the support uh, for communications, the general communications we have in website, working together with the and communication uh, area. Uh, talking very briefly about these five uh, structural uh, informations we, we are managing, we, uh, we we realize that we have some problems and concerns to make the people engage it uh, in several countries. At the beginning, in our uh, activities last year, we, we tried to uh, to engage more countries, and we realized that the celebration is real connected with the, the actual countries we have in World Economic when they were ready for the council. And we are keep this focus to promote a little more intensive activities uh, with our group that we have, and then we, we can recognize in our uh, website. Uh, in the next uh, meetings yesterday, we, we, are, we are discussing some new strategies uh, to promote a little more World Planning Day. And we will increase the communications with the members uh, around the world, establishing some particular portfolio of activities to be used for everyone, everyone around the, 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 the world to make the new celebration next year more stronger than uh, we had this, this year. But this year, we could realize a lot of activities, and I will share uh, some examples. In Australia, we had uh, event, uh, events in like an industrial forum, a lot of tweets, new letters, and press release, uh, release was, was made in the community, together with the community, uh, competing uh, activities uh, like the work cleaning, the apprentice skill contacts. Uh, we also had some uh, important activities in Brazil. I am in charge of uh, a workshop every year to promote the learning activities once a year. Uh, it had uh, the 60th workshop with the major organizations involved in the learning sectors. Uh, also, we, we promote a lot of messages and communications through Twitter, newsletter, and, and press release. 
We also had some promotions in uh, India, including events, communications, and also other competing uh, uh, activities like attending in posters, including the child and the schools and this kind of compete, uh, this competition is a strong example to engage the young uh, people in, in our uh, activities and some other uh, around other countries like in Indonesia with community community planning a challenge. So I think this is the brief uh, report I could share with you. I am open for any other. Oh, I forgot the United States. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> less than not the least, yeah, sure. <laughs> also, we had a lot of other uh, activities, very, very traditional activities here in the United States, including IAPMO uh, presentations and interaction with the schools, tweeters, newsletters, and international poster contacts. Uh, and activities together with CPC that I think you will share a little more details uh, related to not only World Economic Days but other activities. Uh, UK we have some other uh, informations uh, like the same old examples but with similar perspectives or different uh, approaches. Uh, I would like very like to skill uh, planning competition they have in the in, in UK and now I think it is finished. Okay, thank you so much. Is there any uh, questions uh, from uh, just on the uh, on, on point at all? Um, uh, just, I'm gonna, just the uh, planning for 2019, how do you see that unfolding? Yeah, the planning is to, to increase. Uh, to increase the communication, uh, establish a package, a more clear package uh, for give the examples for the community to use uh, what kind of activities we need to consider, what, what kind of uh, communications we could share. And we are trying to establish a communication plan to recover the history related to uh, World Economic Day and the past, showing examples and successful examples we can use in our community in any part of the world. And this is the intention we have to promote more uh, intensive celebration next year. Um, Alberto, thank you very much. Um, so kind of leading into the next portfolio discussion, but I think I'll take the opportunity now to transition um, World Plumbing Day activities. Uh, world Plumbing Day is the World Plumbing Council's most important asset. When you look at um, the uh, traction we get with our marketing communication efforts, uh, the resonation in social media, it truly is the, the most important tool that we have right now. So uh, Alberto's portfolio is so important in, in every event, big and small, from a little coffee session at a supply house to talk about uh, the merits of plumbing to grandiose uh, activities that occur uh, in Indonesia or uh, Australia with a pie cack. Uh, these are all exceptional things and, and, and ways that we can meet one of our most important goals to a plumbing council. So uh, I'm going to be um, in my next session really asking uh, the membership to, uh, to let us know um, what plans you have before they are occurring so that we can then um, make plans to coordinate that within our communication tools so we can amplify that message uh, around the world. And that just that uh, resonation is going to be a great, great tool for us. So, anyway, I wanted to make that message and connect now with uh, Alberto's presentation. So, thank you. Uh, and Alberto, just uh, on behalf of the uh, board and uh, the council, um, congratulations. I think uh, WPC uh, continues to grow. I think the decision to involve uh, three regional directors uh, in, in China, Europe, and uh, some of the Americas was um, was a good a good step forward to to help um, promote that broader uh, world plumbing day message. And, and, and Dave's made an excellent point. I mean, it, it is just our, our, our sort of fundamental stage to sort of um, really draw attention to 
uh, the importance of plumbing, everything that could contribute, and the role of plumbing. And I think um, the point that that can be everything from, you know, a really, what you've shown there is the diversity of uh, events we saw this year. And um, I just um, hope that continues to grow and uh, wish you all the best for the planning for 2019. Well done. Yeah. It's excellent. And uh, Mr. Shane, if you will allow me, I remember to mention with the, the, the group uh, about the UN recognition. Yep. So I stayed by visiting Geneva in the United Nations to discuss uh, how we could promote or establish a recognition of the World Economic Day. And I would like to move a motion to establish a motion. <laughs> Uh, directly to you and ask him formally uh, if they can, if they could recognize our World Economic Day as an international celebration. I'll make that motion. Yeah, so, we're happy to support. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, excellent. Uh, excellent report. Must call. Uh, the dollar up to uh, give us the uh, marketing communications report. Ah, good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Uh, some faces that I don't recognize. So, my name is Dave Viola. I'm the chief operating officer with IATMO, also a member of the, uh, the executive board. And my portfolio responsibility is uh, communication and marketing. Uh, now, the truth be told, um, I'm not really uh, that much involved in the heavy lifting with the marketing communication. I have to give all the credit to uh, the very talented people who are actually in the room right now, and I'm going to make sure I give them credit. So, between IAMO, marketing communication staff, and the high tech communication staff, and that would be Emily, those of you who met her a little earlier, and those of you who uh, were. Uh, remote, sorry about that. Uh, and uh, I want to mention uh, Wayne Huskin, who's a uh, senior vice president of marketing communications for the IAPL group, and uh, Chris Sanchez, who's been coming in and out of the, the room. He does a lot of our social media activities. So, between the three of them, uh, they're the real workhorses and the people that we should uh, thank for uh, all the great work that has done since uh, this board has took over a little more than a year ago. Um, and that's my next comment. Um, so we're in cruise control right now with um, our marketing communication activities. When we took over more than a year ago, we had a big job to, uh, to coordinate all these very disconnected uh, communication tools. So we had a newsletter that didn't have the same branding and messaging as the Facebook page and the Twitter account and uh, LinkedIn. So it was a big, big effort to uh, get them all, get the, the passwords and the accounts and have control and then rebrand everything and make sure that everything was uh, meeting our standards of care. So that's all done now and things are working great. And I think you all notice in the, um, uh, the newsletter that's out, um, the quality, the timeliness of the information uh, is the best it's ever been. Um, I'm very proud of that and it's all back to Emily, Dwayne and Chris and others and their work to get things together. But that gets to my next uh, request. Uh, the newsletter is only good as the content that's within it. And that is the big uh, megaphone that our industry uses to talk about all the cool stuff that's happening within each part of the, each corner of the world. So I'm asking uh, all members to continue thinking about us when, uh, when you're proudly crowing about the things that you're doing locally. Well, let's use the World Plumbing Council megaphone as well. So um, that's my uh, request number one of this group and uh, those who are listening and beyond. Please think of us with your content when uh, when you're uh, wanting to market, send your press releases, the important articles about important issues of the day in your regions of the world. Um, so next, um, uh, Alberto talked about our promotional activities with World Plumbing Council, so I won't go there. Um, social media. So um, real briefly, we have uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube accounts. Um, so those of you um, who are not aware that we have all those, I, I encourage you to subscribe, follow, and utilize, and then also use them. Not only just use them as information sources, but contribute. Um, the uh, exponential uh, growth of uh, the organization's activities and uh, paying attention to what's going on occurs when you're not only consuming, but you're actually participating in, and utilizing those resources. Um, you know, uh, Dwayne Huskin uh, um, provides me uh, stats every now and again on uh, how well uh, we're doing with regard to the increased activity. 
Um, it's been impressive to see the trajectory of growth and the number of users and all the accounts. And I had a couple of um, statistics. Uh, so our Facebook page for World Plumbing uh, Council is um, northwards of uh, 1,300 uh, uh, subscribers, but more impressively is World Plumbing Day uh, page is uh, nearing 3,000 users. Um, that's that's really great. Um, uh, the last we took account was uh, 31,000 exposures um, for World Plumbing Day on the um, the Facebook account. Great stuff. Now even more impressively on Twitter. So um, we have um, 302 followers on Twitter for World Plumbing Council, but on the World Plumbing Day account, um, we have uh, almost 6,000 followers of uh, activity. So that's, uh, and that's growing. Uh, it seems to grow 20, 30% uh, every World Plumbing Day. That seems to be where we get the biggest bump. Would that be correct, Dwayne? Correct, yes. Um, so again, back to the point made earlier, World Plumbing Day seems to be our biggest asset to uh, promote what we do. And uh, to optimize its use is critical. And we all need to share in that uh, beautiful toy or tool of ours, which is not toy, the tool. Um, so uh, rounding down my two other requests. So uh, on the website, um, the website's important. It's been updated. It's uh, modernized. Uh, the branding is consistent. A lot of information there. Um, we encourage all the organizations of the World Plumbing Council to link uh, the World Plumbing Council website to your um, website. Please do that. Uh, many of you already do, but uh, some of you do not. Um, I, I, along with uh, some folks on my staff, we check to see um, that that's happening. And sometimes I send a little email on to ask that that happens, and that does then take place. But if we can get more of that, uh, sending people back and forth from uh, your website to our website and, and vice versa, that helps again spread the word and, and uh, get that exponential growth that we're looking for. Um, and the last request that I have is. Uh, with regard to um, uh, once you get the World Pl uh, Plumbing Council uh, newsletter, um, if you couldn't pass along to your local uh, news channels, uh, the local contractor, plumbing industry magazines, and have <coughs> them uh, publish it. Many of them already do that, but uh, it's amazing uh, talking with Shane earlier this week about um, um, how uh, he came stumbled upon an article about uh, our last um, general meeting that came through two different uh, magazine sources before it got back to him. Uh, so it's again passing along this information to one magazine that got shared with another magazine that he ended up subscribing to and got it. So that's uh, just an example of just how quickly the word can spread. So with that, um, I'll answer any questions. Um, I also have uh, Emily and Dwayne in the room who can help me out if I can't answer them. Jane, um, back to you if there's no questions. No questions for that. Thanks very much, Dave. Thanks. And um, again, another... Uh, Portfolio where we've uh, yeah, sort of made a lot of progress. The problem with um, marketing and marketing effort is that the sky's the limit. There's no there's no sort of uh, finish point that you can reach. There's always more that can be done, and it um, it costs a lot to uh, do quality marketing. And uh, the team that we've um, got a real <laughs> Um, probably the point that Dave didn't make is um, A, they've got day jobs and, and B, they're, um, they're making do with some pretty uh, low resource access. Um, but we're trying to uh, make every post a winner in terms of our marketing and, and publication and, and communication. And um, the work that we're doing through social media, I think, has really uh, lifted. And uh, great credit to your team and your portfolio. The social media guru just entered the house, by the way. I mentioned Chris Sanchez. Uh, there he is. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I have no idea what social media is, but they <laughs> tell me it's really good and it's, um, it's, it's helping our efforts. Now, I'm going to stumble through uh, a couple more reports. Unfortunately, Ken um, Gardner, our, our second treasurer, as I mentioned, was unable to, uh, to be with us uh, today. So just um, moving on to the financial reporting. Uh, I know you're all um, actually waiting to hear that report. Um, the good news is uh, we are in a, in a strong uh, financial position and, and it's something that, uh, again, a lot of work uh, has been done on and um, I pay particular uh, tribute to Ken's team, uh, Brian Smith and others who, who've worked hard to uh, uh, try and you know, simplify our accounts and really reduce unnecessary uh, administrative costs. 
uh, for volunteer organisation like ours, it's, it's, it's always critical that we don't hemorrhage unnecessary resources. And um, certainly um, we've seen a, a strong position develop. Um, we've got uh, a, a sort of a, we're sitting on a cash position of about 638,000 uh, in the bank and trading this year, uh, we'll, we're currently posting about a $62,000 um, surplus. Uh, this is probably uh, predominantly due to a lot of the administrative uh, management being picked up by the um, member organisations and, and not uh, having to uh, fund that directly. Um, the main expenses relate to our scholarship payments, um, which uh, is something I'm always very pleased to be uh, seeing that money go out for such a, a wonderful work. And we'll get a, a bit of an update on that shortly. Uh, there's been some really exciting developments in that area. And of course, our statutory costs, um, just, uh, uh, the uh, costs associated with auditing and bank charges, etc. Um, the 2017 financial review, uh, what many of us would commonly call the audit, um, is uh, has the details have been passed on to KPMG, and um, we believe that review will uh, start shortly. So uh, the normal due, uh, due diligence and governance processes are, are underway, and we're not um, expecting any issues in relation to to that. I guess one of the things that um, we should uh, mention is that uh, the WPC has set itself a target of trying to generate significant sponsorship income and um, we'll come back to that um, momentarily uh, with a view to uh, to increase um, the uh, support that the running of the WPC is, um, is requiring. So whilst we're in a good financial position now, um, we don't want to be known for um, a strong bank account. We actually want to do things and so um, this is really representing a little bit of a war chest to uh, help fund some of the activities that we've got coming up. So um, uh, whilst we um, want to do those things with all diligence and due care, I, I certainly don't want to be known as the chair who built up the biggest financial reserves the, the WPC. I take no credit or pleasure in that unless it's supporting uh, significant activities consistent with our strategies. So um, that's the financial report, that's in detail at the back. If you um, are having some problems with jet lag and can't sleep, um, knock yourself out, grab that financial report, go right through it, and um, I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, could I get a mover for that report? That's a statutory report. So I'm going to accept that report. Um, just moving on um, to now the um, uh, planning organisation membership and resources. Portfolio. Um, I guess in, in, in this area, with two two key activities um, that have progressed since our last meeting, um, the membership uh, renewals have gone out, and um, it's pleasing to see um, at least the status quo on membership has, has been maintained. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, new members, a couple of dropping off. Numbers basically uh, uh, staying the same, and um, the renewal process has seen, um, um, as I said, most most of the um, current members uh, renewing and, and maintaining membership. But um, uh, I guess for, from the um, board's position, it's really um, we, we, we're not um, anywhere near um, taking up the kind of membership uh, numbers that we would like to see. And uh, consequently, we're hoping that our improved marketing effort will um, certainly improve that um, and, and communicate um, a little bit more about the WPC because at times we feel like we are the best kept um, plumbing secret in the world, but not a lot of people understand who and what we are. So we're trying to do that and, and answer this question about World, Plum world Plumbing Council, so what, you know, what's the, what's the sort of the real value proposition? And, um, you know, it's efforts um, like the, the marketing committee that um, helping um, push that forward. But we certainly believe that um, we'd, um, we, we've got a long way to go in terms of developing our membership. Uh, we've also formed the view that our membership will not um, get us there financially. So in order to do the things that we need to do and, and um, get, get involvement from our membership base in a way that we need to, we see that um, 
sponsorship will be a big part of our um, direction going forward. Um, and, and we do have a, um, a program um, that the board signed off on yesterday to really start to develop that sponsorship program. And our aim is to try and um, really get some uh, sort of full-time equivalent resources available to support the ongoing work of the WPC. And we see that um, sponsorship is going to be a big part of that. However, having said that, it, 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 it has um, been pleasing to see us uh, expand into um, more countries. So we're sort of in about uh, 30 countries now with um, uh, membership representatives. And um, we're really um, hoping that we'll um, not, ex not just extend the numbers of, um, uh, sorry, expand the numbers of members that we currently have, but really get that country reach up as well. So starting to really increase um, the number of countries that we're um, also representative. Um, so I guess um, on the resource side, um, we're, we're um, in this position where uh, there's a whole lot more we could be doing. Um, a lot of us are sort of uh, really making uh, a commitment to uh, push the, uh, the agenda of the WPC, but uh, the time for us to, to consider moving to a more dedicated resource allocation, I think, is um, in front of us now. Sitting on $600,000, I don't think there's any real issue with us looking to um, engage some sort of professional uh, resources to take our WC, WPC forward, and that'll be the kind of the next phase that we, um, we start to look at. Um, pretty brief sort of um, uh, membership uh, report, but I'm happy to take any questions or specifics about the current WPC membership database or any other issues? Very good. All right. Well, what we're um, what we're going to do now is just take a, a short break. So there's a there's a, a there's coffee and tea uh, available. Um, you will uh, take a short break for about 15 20 minutes, and uh, we'll resume the, the remaining directors' reports then. Thanks very much. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Um, uh, we'll get the proceedings out of the way. And it's now my uh, pleasure to welcome uh, Tom Dugan, yeah. Director for Education and Training, and to give his portfolio report. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to start off a uh, shout out to my mother out there. My mom's uh, watching on. And I have Shane, tell my mother that I was in bed before 11 last night. <laughs> So uh, I see some new faces here, and I, I, I want to give a brief history of the um, World Plumbing Council scholarship um, that we provide every year. And, um, you know, the World Plumbing Council gives two scholarships out every year for 10,000 U.S. dollars, one for a, a, a recipient from a least developed country and one from a, a developed country. And um, last year we had about 12 applicants, which we were hoping to improve on those numbers to get more applicants. But um, out of the 12, when we uh, tallied up all the scores, they were within a few points, maybe one or two points. So um, the consensus of the World Plumbing Council's executive board, we decided to give three scholarships out for 2017. And um, one of the, the persons that we decided was going to be one of the winners um, we met him in Abu Dhabi, and he was there for the World Skills Competition. And he came to the Abu Dhabi meetings, Mike, you remember? Yeah. Um, very, very <laughs> proactive and wanted to be involved. So um, he wanted to come to the United States, and so um, we wanted to make sure that we could make that happen. But we run into some visa uh, problems of getting him here. And um, so we, we learned some things that we probably didn't want to learn. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to get a... Uh, training visa to come to the United States for some people, but um, we the things that we've learned, we're going to streamline that and get it provide a template so it doesn't happen again next year. But um, he is going to try to get into Canada. We decided that even though he can't come to the States, um, he's going to uh, try to get up into Canada. And Mike Gordon's here from um, United Association Canada, and he's going to try to help him out and navigate through some of the visa things. So um, that's what's going on with the scholarship. Um, this year, we'll, you know, 2018 will be 
granting two more um, scholarships. Uh, that date for filing ad is again September 22nd, 2018, and I will be asking for some help on volunteers to be judges. So if anybody wants to be a judge for the scholarship applications, give me your card and we, we definitely need some help with that. Um, so I'll give you an update on the 2017 scholarship winners. Uh, Shay Shanahan uh, is from Ireland. He wants to study in Japan. And of course, um, uh, like last year, Hans, uh, we talked about the one winner wanted to go to Sweden. And um, we, wor we were worried about the, the communication problems. Um, uh, Shay has hired a interpreter in Japan for three or four days. And uh, actually, the cost wasn't that expensive it was uh, fairly inexpensive so um we have an interpreter helping out shane to get through some of the places that he wants to go um one of the places that he was he's visiting is the world skills competition so his timing couldn't have been perfect uh, he's at the world skills competition and he's um representing the uh, world Plumbing council and walking around and checking that out um, he's going to go visit toto uh, the plumbing manufacturer in, in japan uh, he has a couple days visit there. Uh, the water defense system, the underground sewage museum, um, the Japanese world skills competition, and he's going to the vocational plumbing college in Tokyo. So he has a, a pretty good schedule that he'll be doing. Now the other one, uh, John Claude, I, I, uh, I'm sorry if I butcher his last name, Twag Gurmara, he's from Rwanda. He will be coming to the United States. He did get his um, American visa. So um, he will be attending the uh, instructor training program in Ann Arbor. Now, for use for anybody in here who's not familiar with that, the uh, instructor training program is something that um, the United Association, the organization that I work for, um, they put that on every year, and it's in the uh, uh, Washtenaw Community College in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's a it's a, a program that all the instructors from the United States and Canada they come in and they take. Uh, over 200 courses that they offer. And it, it's more of a teach to teacher how to instruct their, uh, students when they go back home. So um, the executive board from the World Plumbing Council, they thought that that's a perfect venue uh, that we could drop anybody from anywhere in the world into that program because it's already, the infrastructure for teaching is already set up. So um, Gene is gonna be coming in. I sent him the schedule. I said, uh, check out the schedules. If there's anything in it that really you'd like to learn uh, we'll get you in there. So um, he did that. Um, before he comes to Ann Arbor, I have it scheduled that he's going to stop in Washington, D.C. There's a training center that Local 5 has here. It's about a $38 million facility. It has a rainwater harvesting uh, module there that he's very interested in learning about the rainwater harvesting. So I have an eight-hour crash course that we're going to give him on rainwater harvesting uh, in Washington, D.C. Then we're going to drive up to Pittsburgh, which is my hometown. Uh, we're going to uh, get them a residential service training class, and we're going to take them on some construction sites uh, to see how the practical end of in the installation process is of what we do here in the states. So um, we got a, we got a great class for him. Um, we're probably going to stop in Chicago. Chicago's training center also has a, a rainwater harvesting program. Uh, we're going to talk to Dave about maybe coming out to IAP Mazar and T Lab, and and then maybe you know be able he'd be able to go home from here. So. Um, uh, we've got some exciting things that we, we set up for our applicants, and we're looking forward to making this an annual thing. So every year that uh, if, a, if an applicant wins and they want to come to the States, bam, we take them and we, we, we'd be able to drop them right into ITP programs. So um, with that, um, that concludes my report. Does um, anybody have any questions? And uh, maybe I will throw out a question to you. Does anybody here have anything that they could offer me, you know, to make these schedules for our applicants to be more enjoyable, more learning? Uh, if you have something in your country that you think that maybe that would be a great place to bring them in, please let me know. Drop me a card, and uh, uh, we'll forward that on to the winners of the of the scholarship program. So, very good. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, uh, Tom. Just just a couple of uh, contextual remarks in relation to um, the, the scholarships. Um, the WPC sees it as an enormously important part of the work that we do. Uh, it's a tremendous thing to be able to enable someone to uh, pursue 
uh, a field of study and, and develop and then take that back to their country. It's very consistent with what the World Plumbing Council is trying to achieve. Um, and, you know, although Tom's touched on it, I, I really do want to uh, congratulate him and the, and the support uh, from his portfolio to this uh, end because um, this, uh, this program that we've looked at to try and uh, offer a sort of a pre-made scholarship, if you like, a, a, a pre-made study tour, um, will we'll address a, an issue that we've had for some time where people have been a little bit uh, reticent to apply for the scholarships because you've, you've got to have a little bit of um, kind of ability to sort of know what you want to go and look at. So if you're coming from a really <coughs> underdeveloped um, situation, you know, quote, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And um, uh, to have something that sort of says, look, if you've got a, a specific area of study you want to pursue, great, we'll support that. But if not, um, through um, Tom's vision and, and, and the UA support, uh, to be able to just drop someone into a template program where they can, and he's kind of undersold it here, here. Like uh, he, he was walking the directors through it yesterday, and the like. I want to sign up for it. You know, the program that they're, they're going through um, is going to be a really terrific opportunity, and, and it hasn't come easy. It's it's been something that has required a bit of tenacity to get through. I mean, the issues that we have uh, with visas and just trying to get people clear in, in this day and age with a whole lot of other things that are going on does require a bit of effort, but we don't want to lose that. You know, it's worth it if we can get someone you know, coming in from Africa, going to sit in uh, ITP. Uh, it's just a, a tremendous opportunity. I mean, it, in Australia, I thought we did training pretty well. You know, I head up the training school. You know, I take a bit of pride in what we deliver. But, you know, when I, when I went to saw what the UA did, I got you know, sort of put in place. And to be able to have people from around the world being exposed to that level of training is just a tremendous outcome for uh, the WPC. And, and congratulations, Tom. Mike, you want to write something? I think there might be an opportunity, and especially considering that we all have other jobs during the days, to kind of expedite the process and narrow down the communication. Would it be advantageous to set up a survey that can narrow down so a participant that's been brought to a certain level in the application process, or even any applicant can go in there and complete the survey. Because, um, as you're aware, I have the privilege of being part of this as a judge, and I suggest everybody take part in that. Um, I saw where there was those opportunities to, um, it, it was a written report that each person did on their application. Yeah. Right? But uh, it seemed like the different applicants interpreted certain questions differently. So, in some instances, it provided challenges and that you weren't comparing apples to apples, but if you gave them the direction by a survey, if you're clicking on certain items for different uh, categories and saying, uh, for example, you could say what your what is the biggest, the largest uh, need in, in, in your region? What is it that you would, why are you doing this for? And you have different points you can give them. And then the different training that's available, right? They can click on items, whether it's renewables, technology, whether it's the, the basics of plumbing and, and whatnot, I think it would be really beneficial to be able to categorize who would fit what program. And then when uh, different providers come on board with programs such as ITP, we, we can put that as a section with a little, uh, they can open it up and see a little bit more about what it is actually about. I think it would draw more interest. We yeah. get more applicants than the 12 that we got last year. I'm just thinking it's a way to engage you know, like, and now things down. You, you touched on a, a good point. Um, I actually sent a survey to my, uh, Gene because I don't know nothing about him yeah. other than the application that he filled out. Right. And I didn't know, you know, what type of uh, tools does he have back at his um, home school? Does he have computers? Does, you know, what type of curriculum does he have? So, you know, part of the survey was, you know, what type of tools does your uh, plumbers use in the field and building the buildings? Uh, so when he gave us back his answers, we kind of got an idea of how, you know, let's set up his trip so he can hit these type of training modules and be able to uh, easily take them back to Rwanda and implement it into his school. So that's it. We're on the same page. Yeah, and I, I think you, this is something that will, I think, morph as the years go by, that there will be additional questions that are brought up, there are additional comments that are made, additional opportunities that arise that will continually expand on the survey 
and you've mentioned about the resources that you're looking to expand or put funds into, uh, I would suggest this would be the startup, the perfect uh, um, uh, synergy to align with a database where you can start tracking the needs of different countries. Just, just thought. I mean, I think, sorry if I could, I think your comments are, are very timely. Um, I really think this, um, this dual approach, so the ability to have uh, uh, people pursue um, an avenue of study that would otherwise be denied to them but for the scholarship, I think that's got tremendous merit. And if you're able to uh, form a bit of a view, of a vision for what you'd like to do, then we want to be able to facilitate it. Yeah, you've got to go through the process, but you're there. But I think it's a real game changer that we've now got that, hey, if that's not, if you're kind of not sure, whatever, the alternative is, 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 is not diminished. Yeah. If you, you know, as I said, I, I mean, I'd sign up for this, this program. I mean, it, it, it's, it's really world class. What, <laughs> what we're proposing to expose the, um, the winner to, or the, you know, the successful applicant to is, um, you know, something that, you know, you, you think wherever that person's returning to, that's going to be of significant value. And, you know, the, the scholarship shouldn't be, uh, you know, it, it's got a really proud history already. I mean, at World Skills in Abu Dhabi, um, I, I, I took enormous pride in being able to stand there with three, um, uh, three of the, uh, what's that? Former scholarship winners. Four, former scholarship winners who were the mentors. So it's a perfect example where um, applicants have come, have undergone a scholarship, um, Pursued some study, and they're, they're, they're the lead mentors for that that country's competitor at World Skills, and I, I feel we we contributed to that success. So I think, you know, those sorts of outcomes are really good. And Tom made the point uh, yesterday that it's high time we probably review. Now that the kind of the scholarship itself is morphed, we, we we need to look at the administrative processes that support it. And if we're going to send um, people um, overseas. Who are perhaps coming from backgrounds that make, you know, financially this is extremely onerous. Then, you know, I think, and, and Tom was making an excellent point about things, just simple air tickets. Yeah, yeah, you know, we normally reimburse. Well, you know, for some folks, <laughs> that that's a that's a threshold that says I'm not taking up this scholarship because I'd never be able to buy an air ticket in advance, no matter if I was getting reimbursed 24 hours later. Yeah. So we're going to rethink some of that stuff, but at the same time balance the risks and and all, all, all the things that we need to do from a due diligence perspective. But yeah, I think it's a really great story and um, I'm really excited to hear how this, this first case goes and I just hope this really paves the way for uh, what is a kind of a, almost, you know, a pre-packaged, um, really worthwhile um, scholarship that no matter where you come from in the world, you, you, you're going to be able to benefit from. I think, I think it's fantastic. Very good. Anything else, Blake? I'll get with you. Uh, being that you were yeah. a judge, um, maybe you can help out yeah. with some of the things you thought of when you were judging some of those applications. Because it, it, it does. There were some things that happened in the last couple of weeks that we realized that um, with the visa applications that maybe uh, we weren't prepared mm. uh, for some of the things that came about. And, and we're, we're not going to, we can make sure it doesn't happen again. So. Well, take, take it a step further with that. So if you do go that automation process and you build the data, then when you have these general meetings, you have people that have come that are new to the meetings, that are from a country that hasn't been involved before, they can look at what the comments were. You can give them access to the uh, what the problems were considered by previous applicants and kind of align all that stuff. Right? Can I really encourage you to get together with, yes. with Tom and, and maybe <clears throat> look at a bit of a working group to you know, prepare for that next scholarship round? Sure. Thanks, Mike. Um, I'd now like to call up uh, Peter Jackson, who's just going to give us a bit of an update on the um, research and innovation portfolio, which is kind of really timely given the, for those who have been here for the full week, um, the first two days of the, the, the Tuesday and Wednesday program for the uh, Emerging Water Technology Symposium was uh, a really great thing to be involved with and um, just a, a real credit to the organisers there just bringing uh, the, 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 um, not, not so much the speakers, just the issues that uh, that we covered off on, and, and um, always uh, always good to see how common some of these things are around the world that, that, that people are um, 
uh, dealing with and um, events like this help us uh, you know, uh, get some mutual benefit. So uh, it's, it's certainly been a great couple of days at the symposium, but I'll, uh, I'll hand over to Peter. Uh, thank you very much, Stephen. Um, first and foremost, it's my first opportunity to speak at a general meeting, and uh, for those who nominated me originally and then uh, saw it fit to, uh, to vote in support of my nomination, I thank you very much. Um, to take a punt on a Kiwi is always a good bet, so uh, I hope I don't disappoint. Um, quite right with uh, what uh, Shane is saying here, that uh, the innovation, research and innovation uh, portfolio has taken a little bit of time to get off the ground and uh, I've had to use some wise heads like uh, Dave over here and Peter Mark and people like that to actually uh, sort of formulate a plan. And uh, in my thoughts at the start, I thought perhaps more product would be involved. But uh, when you come to some forums like uh, we talked about the last couple of days, you see the research that's gone on into Legionella, ISO, um, you know, accreditation of the standards and things like that. You can see that for the common good of plumbing, there are a whole lot of things out there that we need to absolutely get out into the marketplace. And so, um, this is the challenge to me and to WPC to, to actually ask you people to be our eyes and ears and to um, give us uh, some of those um, informative data that you that you gather while you while you go to a lot of these symposiums around the country and in Europe and places like that. <coughs> in New Zealand, I would say, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, I have a small group. I brought uh, two other fellows that uh, came with me to support me, and that was fantastic. But we have a also, a, you know, a comms person and things like that, if, if people give us some raw data, uh, we can probably put it into a formulation that uh, would be acceptable and then we could come back to, to, to the board and to make sure that we don't uh, actually put information out there that's incorrect, but we get the, the, the right um, steer on it. So um, this is a, you know, a, a small, um, a, a new portfolio for me, so it's not a long uh, report but uh, I can't emphasize enough the fact that um, if you can uh, give us some of that information, we would be very, very appreciative of it. And uh, I'll continue to uh, disseminate it and get it out to the wider community as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, any questions for Peter on uh, research and innovation? Good. Thank you. I'd now like to call up uh, BSA Naran to uh, Give us an update on the uh, first regionally focused four pillars of plumbing for the other one. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is B.S. Narai. I'm the National Vice President in the Plumbing Association. And also so, uh, this October 19, uh, 2018, we are uh, celebrating our uh, 20th anniversary of Indian Plumbing Association. And, uh, you know, that is a very appropriate stage for us to invite. WPC also to join us for this, and then we requested them to have a meeting uh, uh, in in Mumbai on uh, on this occasion. So the basic uh, theme of this uh, conference, uh, sorry, we are also having a conference, Indian Plumbing Association conference, along with this program. So the theme of the conference is uh, four pillars of plumbing. So uh, to uh, you know, what we have decided, the uh, executive board of uh, Indian Funding Association, to take up all the four uh, aspects of the four uh, pillars together rather than separating it out. So, we have taken up all the four pillars together, and uh, it's a two days uh, uh, scheduled, two days program. The first day, we are going to have uh, two. Uh, Symposiums, and then we are inviting two speakers for each uh, symposium on, on a particular uh, uh, or a particular uh, chapter, like uh, 
the participation is going to have two speakers and uh, uh, followed with there will be a question and answer session and uh, followed with the practices we'll have uh, again two speakers we are also <clears throat> in the line with identifying the speakers and uh, we are inviting uh, a lot of uh, speakers from reputed uh, companies and uh, some very good project managers on the subjects uh, like the JLL and the CBR, the Kushman Bay, 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 all these things. The latest has been sent and uh, we are waiting for uh, the replay. And uh, on the products, uh, again, we are going to have uh, a session and there is going to be two speakers for that also and followed with question and answer. So, uh, the, similarly, the protection we are here we are planning to have a panel discussion on this uh, protection subject we would like to invite experts uh, in the field who can discuss on minimizing the risks and uh, risks and readers when failure occurs on this particular subject so we would like to invite one from wpc board which we have, I have already uh, uh, requested the uh, wpc board to have a speaker on this subject and one from uh, contracts legal side from large construction uh, company. Again, we have sent the uh, request. They are waiting for the replay. And one from project management side. And one from a large developer organization. And one from architectural organization. So this is going to be a panel discussion, which is going to have, it's going to have, take two hours and then follow with question and answers. And uh, the third day, we are uh, having the uh, Indian, uh, the, what we call it as Indian Premier Plumbing League. So this is going to be a, a competition for the end plumbers uh, from various aspects of uh, this film, like from architecture, from uh, plumbing industry, and from um, uh, construction industry. So we are going to have this uh, competition. But it starts uh, sometime in the next month from all the chapters of uh, Indian Planning Association. And uh, finally, it will culminate at the uh, uh, October event and where we select uh, the best team uh, of the winners. So I, I have already requested uh, Shane to be the uh, conductor of this particular program to select the winners, winners from this. So this is the tentative program and then uh, the hotel and all these arrangements are already done uh, and then uh, there are some uh, program for the spouses who accompany the guests uh, and then finally uh, this uh, place it's, it's going to be held in Mumbai and then uh, Goa is very uh, close to Mumbai it's a beautiful uh, beach and all those things are there so whoever wants to uh, go there and enjoy any time. So we have uh, already contacted uh, the Thomas Cook and uh, reputed travel agencies so they can uh, make arrangements to go there and then take time. So, so. Um, thanks very much, Chris. Uh, how many um, how many delegates are you expecting? Uh, we have. Uh, uh, Almost uh, planning to have uh, 800 to 1,000 delegates. 800 to 1,000 delegates. Yes, so it's going to be a significant gathering in the yeah. plumbing community. Yeah, it's, it's going to be the single jubilee year of uh, Indian Plumbing Association. <laughs> but this is the minimum we are expecting, but we are working out on much more than that. Yeah, yeah. so that's uh, that's going to be a significant event. It is a, uh, a general meeting of the uh, WPC, so uh, we couldn't. Uh, Encourage enough uh, WPC uh, members who are able to uh, come along. That, that's going to be a significant event, yeah. and um, we're very uh, proud to be involved from the um, uh, and, and honoured, in fact, to uh, see the the, um, the four pillars taken up. Um, it's probably the first time that's net that's going to be presented uh, in its uh, full framework, and um, yeah, we're we're really keen to support the. Uh, 
the the, uh, the conference, and I'm, I'm sure it's going to be tremendous. Thanks, thanks, Thank you very much. Any questions? I would like to let you answer. Thank you. Thanks, please. Hey. And that, that, uh, that concludes our uh, director's reports. Uh, and what I'd like to do is just uh, move acceptance of the reports uh, as a whole. But can I have a proposal and a second of there? So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, and so that concludes our uh, portfolio reports. Um, bylaws and policy changes. So over the next two hours, I'm going to detail uh, exactly what they are. No. Um, <laughs> please know. Um, we have no um, heavy duty bylaw and policy changes to, uh, to wade through. Um, we're leaving that for some of the other uh, intense sessions that are going on around us. Uh, however, um, it, it is my uh, really great pleasure to uh, uh, have, take a report from, from Dane Hansen uh, covering the community plumbing challenge. And I've had an opportunity to speak to a couple of you I know about the, the the, the CPC, and again, this is one of the main uh, support efforts of the, the, the WPC. Uh, this year, we we made a, a ten thousand dollar donation to the program, um, and I don't want to take all um, day and thunder, but it, it, it is um, a, a really great initiative where we're actually um, under the under the context of a project. Going into a, a community and um, really trying to bring together all the kind of themes that the WPC wants to support. So that's giving uh, better access to uh, to fresh water and sanitation. And um, the last few projects that we've been involved with have been uh, uh, sensational. The, the, the program grows each year, and it sort of has the two aspects. It's got the, the overarching uh, project that's that's undertaken in a in a community somewhere. But also um, the ability to send, uh, we used to call them competitors, now they're, uh, they're participants uh, from, uh, from countries around the world and, and PICAC is always very uh, keen to, to send uh, a team of participants to CPC. Uh, we, we see it as a, a leadership development uh, exercise uh, to see, uh, you know, uh, Plumbers, a team of plumbers and, and other trades coming together and really having to nut out the situation and then um, work through and make a lasting contribution to a community is in and of itself great to be involved with. But where what we try and do is look at um, people who we believe will have the potential to be some of the leaders of our industry uh, tomorrow and beyond. Uh, and we move on, Tom, you know, it's not going to be that long. Um, and and we, we see it as a great exercise to. To encourage that development, so we we're very pleased to be supporting the, the CPC, mm -hmm. and um, I'd now uh, just like to invite Dane up to, um, to give us the report. <coughs> Thanks, Dane. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for letting me come today. I appreciate having the opportunity to talk about I Wish organization and also uh, CPC and all the things in store that we've been doing. So uh, my name is Dan Hansen, and I oversee kind of my utmost global policy work in terms of you kind know, of our international collaboration with foreign governments, uh, grants, things like that, and also with the federal government in terms of, and now I wish in terms of the public policy outreach. Um, so what is I wish? This is going to be a brief. I'm not going to go into all the detail, but I wish, and I'm not going to read this. I'll leave it before you. But it's basically a way for us to bring the skills of the funding trade and industry to bear to underserved and needy communities. Um, we do this by tapping into IAPMO and other organizations, well, WPC and all of our partners. Over 100 years of uh, expertise and understanding and training goes into this. And so this effort has the best and brightest minds of the industry today, and we're trying to put this to, to, to bear in an area that really can use it. Um, the Community Plumbing Challenge, I'm not going to go into too much detail, you'll see some videos and some background there, but it's, it truly is a challenge. It, you go in into these underserved, needy communities, people who don't have access to running water, to, to sanitation systems, to be able to um, really have you know, a, a good experience. It prohibits people from going to school, girls from attending um, 
uh, and getting an education. This is the opportunity to come together with truly a world-class uh, international team to be able to bring into an area and make a big difference. And if you have any questions as I go through this, feel free to let me know. So here's just a snapshot of what we've done, or kind of the timeline for CPC Indonesia recap. So it first started in January of 2017, and there was initial scoping for this in February. That's when the, the, the team went out there and identified, that's what they essentially do, they go and identify a site in areas, you're probably familiar, South Africa, Korea, India, and others, but they identify the site and go and really make the preparations that are needed in order to say, what, how much material are we how many how much people is this gonna take, how many laborers are gonna be needed on the ground? And then identify any, any political implications. Who is going to be have trouble with this area? Are there ministries that need to be involved and government officials? And then we make the announcement. So we went through the year, and we actually it went very well, um, very successful. I'll show you a video about it. And then the construction week happened in November of last year. That's when they actually started to, to really implement the, the changes that were identified and needed. And it was great. They doubled the size of the toilets used. They put in the hand washing stations for people. They put in um, a wastewater uh, treatment plan, not a plan, but a septic system that actually exports into uh, the field behind the, the uh, school in a very safe and uh, uh, sanitary way. So you'll show CC videos there as well. But one thing we did follow on is uh, kind of a legacy project. How do we make sure that this thing is going to be sustainable? How do we make sure that these people are going to be trained and properly uh, keep the system up to date and make it safe for years to come? So we'll. Uh, have, uh, here's a picture of the group. As you can see, there's it was a school of approximately about 300 people, 300 kids. And as you can see, the team was delegated 46 people from Indonesia, Australia, India, Singapore, and the U.S. And parts of, like I mentioned, the design, the construction, the legacy project. The legacy project, you may have seen the press releases that have come out back home, but that, that just wrapped up a couple months ago. So before, like I mentioned, there was a total of four toilets that were shared by, four, by all 300 students. Very, very difficult situation. No hand washing facilities, like I mentioned. Um, and the water was uh, brought in and pumped in from a very cool lake. But afterwards, this team did great work. Came in, uh, doubled the number of toilets to eight, uh, two new hand washing stations. And as you'll see in the video, they actually have three different taps on each one. So there's a lot of ability to, to really uh, clean and have good hygiene as they go to school. They connected up to the municipal water supply and they put in two uh, big. Uh, holding tank, water tank systems. Um, like I mentioned, the decentralized wastewater system was installed. And so overall, you had a school that was really struggling before and really had a big need. And this team came in, a great team um, from around the world and really identified a ways to uh, make a big difference in people's lives. And it's a way to give back, it's a way to uh, help people in need. And also, uh, like Shane mentioned, it's a professional development. Thing. These people that come in from around the world they step away from their day to day job and they come in and provide a service. Something that they can really learn. It's like, not only can them learn how to think on their feet, it's not always going to be a, a 1,200 square foot home, you know, very uh, uh, good uh, built, in, built environment, but it's actually, well, this isn't work the same way in the States or the same way in Australia. How do we think on our feet to make this I mean, that system work and bring it up? And how do we do that? And also, it's to give them an opportunity to have a leadership role. You're able to talk to other kids and students and bring people under your wing. Maybe these uh, contractors and laborers don't have that opportunity in their day to day life. They go into a job by themselves and leave. This gives them the opportunity to bring someone other way and teach them. I, this is the proper way to fix something, um, which is which is a great uh, professional development as well. So we'll see as soon as we get this video over. So we can share with you um, 
the video later. Yeah, so we'll show you that we'll get that video sent around, but it's about a three minute video. It's actually really highlights the, the role. Um, that one was actually an example of the UA's uh, uh, video that they had, and they had some um, the, the local that came out and support there, and it really hi highlighted the boots on the ground. It's a, a great video. We'll make sure everyone has a link to that. So we can see it. Um, but it wasn't just simply, let's come in and fix it while plumbing and walk out the door. As you can see, this really uh, uh, evolved around uh, engaging the kids and engaging the participants and everyone to come in and identify some activities to do during the week with the kids. How to get them engaged, not just um, let them go to class and people are working on the side. This is a way for everyone to get embedded in the, in the situation. So they had games, they had cultural events, they had ways uh, like uh, kind of like tests and, and quizzes for the kids to play with and put their get their hands dirty and really see how to. How to make this work? So it's not just a, it's a very, very good all-around project that that it aims to achieve. Um, a big part of this was just pure public health awareness. A lot of these people don't realize the importance of hand washing. A lot of people don't realize the importance of just basic um, hygiene. Um, then, so there was a big component of uh, learning about that, having a clinic come in and work with the kids. And what they could do to not only be healthy at school, but also at home, and how to help teach their families and others how to how to truly be uh, helpful. So they did that hand washing demonstration. They actually had the little uh, teaching the kids. Like some of these kids had no idea the proper way to go and use these hand washing stations. Now they have the water there that they can wash with soap, and they didn't even know how to do that. Now they do. And so you're able to teach a, a whole generation to be able to come in and, and perpetuate kind of good practices and good hygiene moving forward, which is a which is a great thing. So again, uh, more education of students, kind of talking about you know, kind of putting paint on their hands and showing how to do it. And then this is how this is kind of like dirt. This is how you get it off. This is actually the process you go through to clean it. And then really for them to see hands on, this is this is really what um, uh, can be really can ensure people are, are healthy. So not only the education of the students, but the education of the community. So we've been partnering with the ministries, the national governments, and local governments within this region as well. Because we want to come in and make sure that they know that this is this is a demonstration project. This is a project to say, look, if you can bring up a system, if you can bring up a school, if you can bring up any sort of uh, plumbing body system into up to code, if you can bring up the code, this is what you're going to see. This is how it will look. You're going to see healthy environments. You're going to see proper sanitation. You're going to see proper wastewater disposal. You're going to see these things. And so if they can come in and say, well, Look at this organization. They came in and brought this up the code. This is how it could work if we do it in other parts of our uh, in our in our country as well. So um, it was a great team. Unfortunately, IAMO has an office in Indonesia, and they were able to really uh, provide some hand, hands on guidance and training to much larger outreach than just the school, which was very beneficial. Um, so a big part of this, of course, is system maintenance. So we don't have people there 24 hours a day on on site to sort of manage and make sure the systems are running. So how do we make sure that these systems are going to be maintained moving forward? So of course, putting on the training programs, bringing in uh, all the teachers and the students on how do you properly manage these things? How do you, how do you manage uh, the system? What if something happens? What, what do you do to fix it? Of course, if there's some catastrophic thing, then, then we can engage. But we also want them to take ownership of this too. This is their school. This is their ability to, to keep it working. So um, it's a it's an all, we just don't come in. This is a multifaceted approach to the community quality challenge. Um, so we also work with local industry. So one, one outspurt of this, this is part of the large project that I have been working on as well, but an outshoot of this is basically a creation of an Indian Plumbing Association. So within Indonesia, this Indonesian Plumbing Association got brought together with some very key um, manufacturers and entities, and they actually did a big kind of ceremony. And they, they get real engaged and have some sponsorships and any kind of contributions for this event. So you're able to see not only a support for the humanitarian side of it, but also you see the businesses start getting involved and come together in a very fruitful, beneficial way. So again, we uh, these are different pictures of like ministers and uh, key development banks that came out and were uh, able to give awards and presentations and kind of the, the whole PR part of it, but 
this is a way for us to, um, if we want to do follow-on projects and, and regions, that's an important part of it. We want to be able to come back and say, look, you, you've seen this, you've endorsed this project before, um, how can we continue to assist and how can we continue to engage? So it's part of the effort that we do. Um, and we've actually received while we were out there, because um, some one of our Indonesia projects were uh, help funded by USA, and so actually just happened during this week, during the final legacy uh, week um, in March, USA had their uh, contractors come out to do a site visit as well and inspect it because they were looking at potential future funding demands. So they wanted to do a whole audit, but they also want to look at future funding opportunities for projects as well. So this creates a whole new opportunity for uh, funding and support from other governments as well. So the media coverage was actually very, very good. So as you can see, there's 35 total media uh, hit pieces throughout the time. And you can see um, national and local, um, TV, online, and then radio. So this is, and, I, and that's not even mentioning the press releases in the United States, the pickups by USA internally, things like that. So this is just in-country um, media. So it, it gets out there. The sponsors are, are getting very well um, recognized um, and, and really well contributed um, in attribution for it to be very much uh, supported. <clears throat> uh, some some snatch, snapshots of various of the press that was picked up on different websites at the time and publications. So that was, um, so before I move on to next, is are there any questions generally on CPC Indonesia, the most recent one? I know we don't have a lot of time, but is there any questions before I move on to kind of talk about how we're moving forward? Dan, perhaps we can uh, um, dig a little deeper into um, uh, the growth from um, the, the very beginning when we, uh, we started the, the Community Funding Challenge to where we're at now, because each, each event we've grown and learned and, and added dimensions to it to, uh, to add value. And the last one was that uh, um, training component where we work with the vocational students locally and uh, and they're actually working with the great team from PyCAC and Randy Lord from UA and they're getting in-classroom training, um, expert training from two of the best uh, you know, trainers in the world uh, and that's part of the dimension that uh, is new and different in this goal round. So if you want to maybe touch on that. Well, yeah, I mean, to your point, so that's because, as Shane mentioned, it used to be kind of like almost a competition. People view it as, oh, you bring in teams from around the world and you kind of compete and do this together. And it's really been involved where when we look at an area to potentially do work, we look at what vocational schools or what kind of training facilities are in that area. Where can we team up with a potential vocational school for them to work side by side with our people to say, okay, this is exactly what we're looking and we're gonna, and, and, and I'm just mentioning moving forward um, to the domestic thing, how it's continuing to grow. Because the next project that we're looking at, a very strong component, this is gonna be a vocational training program. We're looking to do a CPC in the US. And so we're seeing an evolution of, of just coming in and doing a project and kind of doing it on a competition level. And then now we're trying to engage and create a curriculum for uh, the, the, the trade school in the area, which was outside of Jakarta. And how do we work side by side with our people coming in and build things to code and try to build things to or the systems to proper standard? And then how do we actually equate that into a curriculum potential program? How do we have that a long term training program? Our goal that we would like to see is use a program that we can certify in that area to be able to maintain those systems and report them. We're not going to be able to have. Uh, a vocational school or a trade school or something in that area to say, look, we need to have someone who can come in and actually fix these systems later on. And how do we work side by side with all our stakeholders to ensure that that curriculum is embedded um, for years to come? Because if we're not there, how do we and how do we maintain these systems? And if we can have um, the, the basic training programs implemented at um, at any number of school, whether it be a, a local partner uh, that provides training or an actual locational or a community college type of thing, that's uh, that's that's a sustainable effort. That's something that we can keep moving on for years to come. And that's why when people we get approached by different um, organizations and entities all the time, hey, come to a CPC here, come to a CPC here. Um, but for us, we need to step back and say, how, how do we make this a sustainable process? We don't want to do these one-offs and just have the project fall apart in a year and a half, but we're not there, and it just causes problems for everybody. How do we make that a sustainable goal? So to Dave's point is that that's part of the sustainable and uh, legacy of the project is that you embed it and you provide the proper training for years to come. 
So one of the big pushes that we've seen is, so we have, there's obviously a need internationally, and that's going to continue, we're going to continue to engage internationally. But I wish has actually been really uh, supportive and looking at opportunities to work domestically. People have come to us, our members, our sponsors, our board of directors, and are saying, look, there is a need internationally without a question, but there is a, a tremendous need domestically as well as the United States. And you don't think of that. Like, when you think of the U.S., you think of, like, here, you're trying to your boss and it works. But there are areas in this country that people, like, when we've been researching different areas to work, there are literally areas that have no running water, and they're bathing their children in sinks with bottled water. And that's in the United States, and that's very prevalent in certain areas of our country. And so, um, the big focus this year, we're actually doing a site visit and, and kind of determine, we can't really announce where we're looking at right now until we actually start signing agreements, but the next project will be um, in the United States um, this year, and uh, really focusing on a very immediate underserved area that, very similar to what you saw in Indonesia, um, and very, have, have they have no running water. So we're really excited to see that move forward as well. Um, but again, in tw late 2018, 2019, um, we've already been having internal discussions within IWISH is uh, follow on to our previous work um, with the Indian Plumbing Association in Massachusetts, India. And so we're looking to follow up there and do it, uh, another follow on project as well. So it's a global scope. We're looking to do it on, on multiple levels in multiple areas and not just focus on certain geographical regions, but areas that not only make sense for WPC members, IMO sponsors, IWA sponsors, and everybody else, because um, everyone else needs to, to have benefit and, uh, and really find, see why, why it's a valuable item for them to engage, which is something that we can't do by ourselves. So that's why we're always looking for input and support and trying to find areas that you know that need to have engagement by, by the resources in this room uh, we can present. So, um, to talk about that a little bit. This is just kind of give everyone a snapshot. Um, actually, before I jump into that, I do want to talk a little bit about India for another moment. So, IATMO, um, in terms of one thing we do is we do a lot of work with the U.S. government here in, in, in the U.S. and in Washington, D.C. And so they're actually putting on a big United U.S. Trade Development Administration is putting on an international conference on water and sanitation in June. And so, IATMO is one of the competing organizations for this. And so, one of the big takeaways. We not only really talk about how important international standards and, and codes and practices are, but also um, the basic philanthropic area. And so we'll be definitely talking about IWISH and CPC and what can be done um, as a demonstration. Because as we talked about, it, uh, we want we want when we go into a system, when we go into a school like this in India or wherever we go, we want to bring it up to a code. We want to bring it up and, and not only use it um, as a as a way to bring people better water hygiene, but um, allow people to come in and actually look at this is what a, a building would look like if you have replica code this is how it will work so that's going to be a highlight that we we uh, really emphasize with this uh, big event in, in delhi later in june so we're going to continue to engage all facets of all governments we engage in and we don't want to just come in and kind of sneak in under the radar do a project and leave we want to make this as big as wide and as wide as possible to uh, get as much support as we can to that point um as you can see, the, this is kind of the breakdown for IWISH and um, basically the kind of CPC engagement that we've seen. So I'm, I'm not going to break into every little detail, but as you can see, about 45% comes from labor, 32% comes from association, 11% comes from the U.S. government. We have other in-kind uh, individuals and companies that provide money as well um, to, to this ongoing effort. So um, one thing that we're trying to do over and over again is to uh, really, really calibrate and ensure that there is value for every sponsor. That they're going to get their, they, they get their value and to retain the sponsors to make sure that they see the value in supporting this work and supporting um, the projects. Um, plus, we also want to engage, um, continue to engage. We want to, uh, every, any project, any, any philanthropic project throughout the world only grows and you can become more successful when you get brighter and broader and broader support. So that's kind of our goal. We want to continue and find more and more support in any way possible to make these bigger. So it'd be great if we go in and do one school, but what if we come in and do two or three schools? What if we come in and do an entire uh, uh, technical campus um, of a school and do four or five buildings? So, I mean, in, in theory, that's kind of the goal is to constantly have this grow into something um, even greater. So focusing on moving forward, we're actually going through some uh, 
kind of updating the website. We're going to improve all the communication channels across the organization. We want everyone to know about things in, in the moment they happen. So we're going to be uh, announcing uh, the domestic project here in the U.S., which will be happening. We'll announce that in June. We want to make sure everyone has that immediately. We don't want you guys to, to hear about it two weeks before it happens. We want you to be months and months ahead so you can engage accordingly and support that. Um, we want to continue the student media partnerships, which has been a phenomenal part. Um, we partnered with uh, various student organizations and one in Singapore for our past projects to do maintain and do videos and things like that, which are actually very well done. And again, we provide that training component to students in a, in a new way that um, contributes to what we also need some media deliverables for showing what we do. Um, one of the cool things is just kind of engaging local and, uh, schools is this is actually a poster that was drawn by a sixth grader. And so um, it's, they do a world, so we do an essay contest and a poster contest every year within iWish and uh, send it out on the website, put out press releases, and then people put together pictures, uh, mm -hmm. draw pictures or essays. And um, so that's just kind of the list of the, the, the winners on the left. But um, you can kind of see a way it's engaging a whole new generation. This is a, it's a cool thing. It's pretty impressive for a sixth grader. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'd um, just like to point out that uh, this poster contest is actually a carryover that used to be part of the World Plumbing Council. And it was uh, in uh, the Irish operation picked it up and carried on the legacy. So it's want to make sure we connect with the dogs. Yeah. Great, great point. Great point. <clears throat> so we want to expand that as far and wide as we can. So it's not just, we'd love to see a winner from Australia or a winner from somewhere else. Um, so that's not just. Uh, so here's my contact information. Um, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions, or if you have any questions that I can answer now, I'd be happy to. Um, if you're not on our email list or distribution list, let us know, so you can immediately know when things happen. Um, we'd love to. We want to make sure that everybody knows. If you're not following us on Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff, uh, get that out there so we can begin to roll out all the information to you guys. Yeah, I, I, I know we want to um, be careful about uh, announcing the next project specifically, but um, I think it might be appropriate to in general talk about um, the types of, of projects we're uh, looking into as far as uh, you know, Indian reservations in the United States uh, and what kind of situation they're in as far as the percentage of folks with uh, access to water and sanitation. Can you yeah, touch on that a little bit? Yeah, so we've been approached um, over the past year um, and really heavily in the past six months on the various domestic projects and needs. Uh, we've been approached by a couple of the big um, plumbing manufacturers about work they're doing in the Deep South, which has some tremendous needs. And we've also been working with the federal government on some really desperate needs on some of the Native American Indian reservations across this country. Um, we've been seeing some statistics that they have where uh, some of the, the worst water systems, worst uh, portable drinking water, um, uh, adoption throughout the, throughout the, any demographic in our country, the lowest is within the Native American Indian reservations. And so uh, we were working closely with uh, the U.S. federal government, which has jurisdiction over um, all Indian reservations, on identifying uh, uh, good areas. Today's point is that's been a heavy, a very, very heavy focus for us. Uh, and so we're looking at a reason because within these Native American Indian reservations, um, the needs are very similar. So you can look at some in the four corners part of the U.S. There's some in the Northeast, and there's actually um, some in the South Dakotas, and they're almost all identical. The needs that they have, they almost, in a lot of these areas, unless they have a problem of water and natural lakes, they almost <coughs> rely on either rainwater, which is not the best system, and actually often becomes contaminated. Well water, which has a lot of um, different materials and arsenic and other problems, or they rely on solely bulk bottled water. So these are areas that we're looking at. So. You'll probably see an announcement coming out here pretty soon, but it's uh, going to be uh, working with the kind of the Native Americans here in the U.S. So, so we're excited about that because you know the that's been a big push for uh, for some time now. So, yeah. Any other questions we can answer, or does, does everyone have is everyone receiving emails and press releases from Irish? Is anyone not that we we want to make sure that we get those? And if you have any uh, interest in supporting the next um, CPC, and you start seeing, I mean, or any of that we do, let us know. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll we'll engage that. Absolutely. Thanks very much, uh, Diane. It's uh, cool.
always a great uh, pleasure to hear about what's happening with uh, Irish and particularly the uh, community climate challenge. And um, I think you've heard the challenge. There'll be uh, obviously further projects coming up. Um, there's the ability to contribute uh, sponsorship in kind, but you know, really looking to get participants. Uh, people have really uh, been able to bring a lot to these projects, but get so much benefit out of it. Um, really, uh, that's where I see there's a great uh, opportunity to uh, get as you know, uh, as many of our up and coming kind of leadership development uh, opportunities really uh, put to put to put to a real practical uh, contribution to a community and leave a lasting impact. Um, you know, how often do you get to do that? Uh, and this is, yeah, sign up now. This is a real chance to uh, to do something like that. So thank you, thank you very much. Thanks. Let's uh, let's thank Dave for that. Uh, uh, that, uh, that, that concludes uh, our formal uh, part of the meeting, the, the, the general items that we uh, need to get to. Uh, what we'll do now, we throw the meeting open to um, anyone who's got uh, any uh, information or uh, wants to update about uh, things that might be happening in their corner of the world or uh, issues they've become aware of or uh, anything they want to uh, report back to the meeting. So it's just sort of a bit of an open mic session if anyone wants to uh, uh, raise anything now that'd be uh, that'd be most welcome it's a shy group <laughs> my start yep um <clears throat> as mentioned earlier i work with qa canada and um we have a few different initiatives going on we're proud to say we've hired somebody nationally uh her name's alana markman she's the national manager of youth uh, women and Indigenous Relations, and in respect to that, she's overseeing many different projects, and we're really excited, though I'm not at this point allowed to disclose the particulars of some of the projects. We're very excited, and we'll be able to report at the next event, I'm sure. Um, but a new opportunity has come across uh, very recently that the Canadian government is looking at aligning things to allow immigration of skilled professionals from other areas of the world and uh, we've been tasked at addressing some of the strategies and ensuring that the people that come over that claim to be qualified are qualified and uh, I'm sure this would be the same concern in, in all parts of the world and that it's it's going to impact on the qualified individuals presently working in Canada and potential opportunities for Canadians is what is some of the friction that we're going to encounter. So I was speaking with uh, Hans, uh, uh, Peter, and uh, uh, hearing some of their experiences, uh, how they've dealt with it, uh, and, and uh, really taken a, a, a leaf, a feather from your cap, so to speak, is... Uh, Can you speak to them? Yes. Yeah. Um, some very important points, one of the <laughs> ones that you mentioned, Hans, was to say that it's a separation between the people that want to be there and, uh, and want to participate in this, and those that may not necessarily want to be part of a trade, but are getting pushed into that position. And uh, the resources, the monetary resources and time that's put into investing in, in people that are entering into our system and properly integrating them, it's going to be a massive uh, investment, not just by government, but it's going to be by associations such as ours, by industry, by manufacturers, or whoever, whatever sponsors are out there. We want to make sure to get it right. So um, I'm kind of opening it to everybody in this room that if you have similar experiences, uh, uh, opportunities come across our desk that we're going to be speaking on this, myself in particular, in 12 days. And uh, I can address all, all those things myself with my own thoughts and with that of our organization, our international organization. Uh, but if we have other countries or regions that have uh, encountered these challenges in the past of how to properly do things that we want to get it right. That's our motto for you. Anyway. We do it right the first time, right? And uh, we want to not learn all the lessons from scratch. We want to um, accept your input and, and apply it to our discussions that are going to be coming up shortly. So I'd be very happy if, if you don't uh, have information that comes to you this time to mention to us. Uh, if you have uh, um, an opportunity to reach out to me, I provide anybody in here with my card, my contact information. And we look forward to
forward to speaking with anybody. You should speak to um, Dave Peters too, because uh, he, was, he was telling me about some work he's recently done in uh, Haiti, I think it was. So okay. you know, that's a similar mechanism. You could have a chat with him. Definitely. We've, um, in New Zealand, we've um, had quite a big issue with um, people wanting to work in New Zealand. Yes. Um, and one of the problems we've had is that they've actually been coming to New Zealand and working anyway, regardless of the fact that they don't pick up a license and they're not in a position to pick up a license. Yes. So the sort of things we're doing here, and I'll talk a little bit more about this this afternoon, but uh, we've set up a system where they can actually get their overseas qualification assessed. Uh, and then we're mapping the qualification. Yeah. So for instance, if someone's coming from the United Kingdom, some of their qualifications map very close to the New Zealand's qualification. We have a backup where they get to sort of registration exam. So if their qualification um, is up to scratch, we will issue them with a provisional license that allows them to practice for up to a year. And then during that year, they should study Zealand code, bring themselves up to scratch, and pass the registration exam. Um, however, um, what, what we've also had in New Zealand is we've had virgin flux of people from Asia. Uh, and to the point where our largest city at the moment, 30% of the people in it are Asian, but it's forecast to be 60% by 2050. And a lot of those people are actually carrying out funding work unqualified. Um, we're trying to get the message out to them to actually, to their community, or getting onto the communication channels that there's a risk to health and safety if they're not using lots of people. But the other thing we're now experimenting with is rather than trying to keep them out, we want to try and bring them into the team. So we've approached one of the trainers and we said that um, although New Zealand's predominantly an uh, English speaking country, we actually want to run a trial apprenticeship in Mandarin with the idea is that if we can actually get enough people inside the team from particular communities, um, maybe we can encourage everyone to come inside the team and actually be trained. Um, so those are sort of the things that we're cracking on over here. Yes, I appreciate your input. That's uh, very helpful. We we do have similar problems already happening. We do have people migrating to Canada um, and providing qualifications that are not easily verified, and uh, it's dealt with on a province by province basis instead of on a federal level. So I think the at the federal level, that's where they're trying to address it now. So it's an opportunity because then it will. Whatever decisions are made there will impact the provinces, it will trickle down to the provinces. So we have a, a, a great opportunity to impact on that decision making now and make it have to go into legislation as a requirement. What, what we found helpful too was that if we identified that there were, say, two or three units missing, it would give them an opportunity to go and study just those units to bring themselves up to scratch. Yes. Uh, but we've also introduced, if they can show a portfolio of work, and have a, an interview with a person from the trade and convince that person from the trade that they've actually done that work and can display that competency, then we'll give them a tick off for that as well. Yeah. Um, otherwise, what happens is they tend to come out and work as well as and yes. we're not bringing them inside the trade and we're not getting them up to scratch with New Zealand standards. Right. That's right. If, if you think we have done foreign languages, would you do away with Australian languages? Yeah, can we have anyone else want to uh, raise any issues? Let us know about anything else happening in their corner of the world. Good. Um, just uh, I've been in a lot of trouble if I didn't mention uh, WPC. 2019. Did you want to uh, play that sting or we're going to do it later? Yeah, that's fine. So, uh, just to mention uh, the triennial conference uh, next year, 2019, uh, in Melbourne. So, uh, I don't even have to say anything more, but it's also going to be a, a wonderful uh, uh, gathering of the, the public community. Um, I don't know how we're going to go to follow the Mumbai, seriously. I don't, I don't know about uh, you know, hitting a thousand or more, but um, you know, the, bar, the challenge is being set, so we're going to have a crack. But I uh, really want to encourage people to start thinking about um, that, that trial conference in, uh, in Melbourne. Uh, 
11th to 13th of September. Uh, pretty good time uh, to be visiting uh, visiting Melbourne. That time is a bad time. But uh, uh, really carrying on the work that we've done in India to really, um, uh, again, showcase the four pillars of clubbing, really uh, bringing, uh, hopefully, hopefully by that stage, you know, this framework continuing to develop and it will be a real uh, opportunity to uh, look at uh, issues across those four parameters and um, I think it's going to be a, a, a significant plumbing community event. So uh, just uh, get that into the diaries. Um, if there's no other no other business, I'm sorry, I don't give you a chance. That's good. Um, we'll, we'll close off the session. Um, we're reconvening back here at one for the products forum. I uh, really encourage anyone who's, who's available to come back and, and join us for that. Um, the I have no uniform plumbing code technical meeting is, is going on as we speak if they haven't broken for lunch. So there's an opportunity to have a look at, um, you know, it's sort of like cage fighting in there. You know, sort of going, <laughs> sort of have to go and go. It's, uh, it's, it's a blood sport. We can, uh, you can go in and have a look at that. Um, but whatever you do, um, get back here at one. And uh, we'll keep on. Thanks very much for your Excellent.